This is a patient who has come with recurrent attacks of pancreatitis and a previous endoscopic examination showed an abnormal bulky papilla. She has uh, had some attempts at, I think, uh, in another center, a spintrotomy and the biopsies were taken, but they couldn't get any pathology. I am now down with a side wing endoscope and you can see very clearly that the papilla looks abnormal. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see any specific characterization to say what this abnormality is, but I can see the papillary opening down here and above there is another small fistulous like opening going into probably the bile duct because I can see bile there. Now what I am going to do is I am going to take pathology biopsies from this papilla here and then we will subject this to a quick uh, viviscope confocal microscopy to see what the pathology is. The reason why this is important is that if I see a benign lesion here, I could even think of doing an ampullectomy directly or if it is uh, uncertain could put in stents in this case. So what I am going to do is, I am using a standard biopsy forceps which we use for upper GI. It is little stiff when you use it on an elevator here but we will get it up there and then I will go to the area where I suspect there is some pathology open and then take biopsies from this directly. I am using my big wheel to get close to the, pap to the ampulla and then insert look biopsy. So I take a bit there and then the biopsy bit is taken from the suspected area and then we are sending it over. You can see the pathology preparation of this, how it is made so that even before I finish my complete examination, we will probably have an answer. Dr. Babak there is preparing this if the camera can focus on his hands, is preparing a specimen there to a little different from what we do in conventional histopathology and we will ask Dr. Babak and Dr. Anuradha there to tell us what they are actually doing. Thank you very much doctor. So I deposit the uh, biopsy on cytomatrix and I start staining with uh, fluorescent dye, uh, acrine orange. This is representative of hematoxylin staining in HNE. So we have to incubate the dye with the sample for 30 seconds. So this is a laser scanning confocal microscope from Vivascope company Munich. It can generate uh, HNE-like images from fresh biopsies or fresh uh, tumor margins uh, in approximately two to five minutes. EBUS, FNA, FNB, or use FNA, FNBs. No, I'm staining with fast green. This is a representative of eosin for us, and a little bit of staining the extracellular matrix. So okay. the main advantage is we are not going to make any squash smears, we are not going to damage the tissue and we are going to get sections just like the protocol based uh, biopsies yeah, I think of this is a very important point that Dr. Anuradha is making that uh, we normally when we do a rose technique at the endoscopy site, we make smears or squash technique and the specimen is destroyed. In this case the specimen is intact, they are going to put it directly after this small staining onto the confocal microscope. And subsequently, if you want to access and then do a regular histopathology, it becomes quite easy in this case. And the staining is also almost uh, very quick and rapid stain, almost uh, these are the rapid, like the rapid h &D stains. So we are going to get the images um, just like we do the rapid h &D stains. And I guess the advantage would be it is almost like a tissue instead of cytosmears. So now he is placing the matrix onto the slide. I am just adding a media so that it will be ready to scan the images. And this will be loaded onto the machine. Okay, I load the uh, mount the sample with the joystick. I navigate this to the center, and I take a picture with the macro camera. Okay. 
Да. And I start scanning. So the technology is also called um, uh, ribbon scanning or strip mosaic scanning. As you can see, there are strips of the image, which is in the mosaics are stitching together. When we are finished, then the image is ready uh, for evaluation by uh, our pathologist. So one or two more strips. So it's done. Now it's a stitching, and then I will open the image. So please. Yeah. So this, you can see that uh, uh, by scanning this um, tissue, we have got almost uh, a tissue similar to the uh, squash smears, and um, you can appreciate the uh, nuclear details. And this is an ampullary uh, lesion. So, we can see the um, mucosa as well, and here you can see some uh, benign tissue here. So, sir, this was a nodule, and you were yes, uh, suspecting yes. a uh, neuroendocrine neuro lesion, but yes. if you see here, this is the normal mucosa, and we have some lesional cells here. Yes. So, if we go to the hyper of this uh, image, they are little monomorphic round cells. Maybe we can fine-tune this uh, and adjust a little bit the color okay. for crispness. We can go live. Please click in the center. Uh, I yeah. will go live yes. because we can do then uh, optical sectioning of the same region. So oh, This is fantastic. So you can actually go to the same region and do a again yes. sectioning. Yes. So this so is very interesting. I little bit adjust the signal. Yeah. And we can do a Z stack of here. So basically, by Z stack, it means we are going. We are able to go to different depths of the tissue, which normally on a routine uh, histology we will take serial sections. So this uh, machine is giving us the advantage of doing serial sectioning uh, right in the endoscopic room. Yeah, I'm opening the Z stack and uh, give the mouse to pathologist. Yeah, so you can see that we are able to go to the different layers here. And you are able to see the cells. Now, if we go back to the um, please close. Okay. Double click on the top. Yes. So this is the whole specimen. So this is the whole specimen. So you can actually go to different uh, areas and uh, view the uh, entire lesion. So if you see this uh, area, you can see that there are some interspersed uh, goblet cell-like areas. So yeah. probably this is the, here you can see the goblet cells nice. and the nucleus. So this is the normal uh, mucosa and yeah. here probably are the uh, cells of interest. Yeah. So correlating with the clinical findings um, and these nests of cells, we may be dealing with uh, a lesion in the lamina propria yeah. of uh, round cells. So and here you have some uh, spindle cells, so probably this is the muscle, uh, muscularis uh, layer. Yeah. And if we go on uh, to the other areas, here again you can see the spindle fragments, so probably this is the muscularis uh, mucosa, so you yeah. can make out the different layers. And here you can appreciate the benign nature of the epithelium, so yes. that means there is no dysplasia of the lining epithelium, yeah. and you have some nests of cells, so probably one, we are dealing with a round cell uh, lesion, and uh, we might have to do IHC to further uh, yeah. delete what kind of lesion that we are seeing. I think this is a very good quick demonstration, Dr. Randhada, because in just five minutes you told us, one, of course, there is no malignancy, second, you have monomorphic cells, and you took differential section in that area to tell us that these type of uh, abnormal cells, you can actually further characterize by doing IHC. And the important thing about this VB section machine is that next five minutes you can actually do an immunohistochemistry staining. You don't have to wait again to tell us. We can get an immunistic chemistry to, to tell us whether it's net and what grade of net it is, whether it's, uh, I think, grade 1, yes. 2 or… So, even from the morphology, that. we don't have that much of pleomorphism or yes. uh, mitosis, so probably yeah. it is a lower uh, grade. Lower grade. And yeah. even in this figure, you can very well see the normal epithelium, the spindle muscle cells yeah. and these nests of cells. So, all, all of these are in, yeah. are in one uh, So, I think now yeah. we have the answer at least that there's no 
ampullary CA and the next step would be we will go ahead and do an endoscopic ampullectomy and give you the whole specimen. Now, I understand that in this vivisection machine you can give up to 3 centimeters uh, sections, a 3 into 2 centimeter specimen the largest that can be taken. So, when you do an ampullectomy the lesion would be probably 2 into 2 centimeters. So, then you can analyze the whole tumor at site itself and let us know if an ampullectomy is complete. I think this is a major advantage at least in the science of endoscopy and I think as endoscopists now we are delighted that this type of machine is available in the endoscopy room to help us complete the therapy. So, that you do not have to wait for histopathology, you do not have patient has done to come back and this is a certainly a major advance that occurring in the field of endoscopy.